family, it's time for a true look at your world. <laughs> Let's get hooked up for Pack Therapy. Here's your hosts, Tim Donnelly and Graham Hill. Welcome into another edition of the Pack Therapy Podcast. I'm Tim Donnelly alongside Graham Hill. Yes. Should we start with tears? How does this work? Maybe I might edit in uh, Simple Minds, Don't Forget About Me, and insert an image. We should have inserted an image of DJ Burns work, walking through the brickyard mm-hmm. with a fist up. Hey. Or maybe the boombox on his shoulder. The boombox would have been nice. And just the fade out, and you know. The fact with the total eclipse coming, we could have just already automatically had the blackout. Uh, <laughs> total eclipse us. of the heart, maybe. Uh, so here's the deal, everybody. Uh, we've been on this magical run for the last month, and and we've had the privilege of covering it. The players, I'm sure, enjoyed it. The fans, I'm sure, enjoyed it. Uh, but but it's it's over now. All right, see you guys. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's been been real. No, uh, you know, it, to me, it, it, we can use all the cliches. I, I saw Graham posted on Twitter that it, it's a don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened moment. You can throw all good things must come to an end. You can like you can throw all of the clichés out there. The fact of the matter is there's not there's only one team every NCAA tournament that gets to end on a victory. Uh and and state and I believe everyone kind of has this kind of uh, uh awareness. Uh I mean it had seven victories that felt like something special and and that's probably more than anyone else in in, in the country the louisville and syracuse wins kind of felt uh expected everything after that you know it, it was it was house money and it was it was gravy it was icing and and these players took an entire kind of uh community on a ride and yeah it ended one game before you'd like it to two wins before you'd you'd like it to in a perfect world but you know, beggars can't be choosers. If, if there's not a single person amongst us that wouldn't have signed up for a Final Four when you were in the middle of losing your last four regular season games, there's really nothing to be upset about if you're an NC State fan because the team just overachieved. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, let's just call it point blank. Let's say it how it is. And really, the only thing that you could be upset about is that it is over. I, I mean, you could be upset about the, the shooting performances mm-hmm. and playing Purdue, but that's just kind of what you get when you go up against a powerhouse like Zach Eady and that team. But I did use the phrase, you know, the term, don't cry because it's over, mm-hmm. smile because it happened, has never been more true for NC State fans. And I think it, part of that is true. Uh, there's nothing to be ashamed about if you're, if you're a Wolfpack fan. And if anything, there's just, this is just more reflection and celebration for what the team was able to accomplish. Watching the game, and, you know, I like to use the, the you know, kind of the, the not – super fan test watch yeah. the, watch the game with someone that hasn't watched every minute of NC State basketball this year uh, I've said how fun it's been over the last month to watch the nation get to know who DJ Burns is and have them go like how do you stop this guy and I'm going like I know we've been watching it all year we've been saying the same thing uh, two years um so I was watching the the final four with with my wife and there were a few times you know and and she she played college field hockey she's an athlete but Granted, sometimes when I'm watching, you know, the fourth college basketball game of the weekend, she's like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go watch something else in the other room. Yeah. Uh, she she said they look tired. Yeah. Just a few times she went over and went, oh, he's exhausted, and I get it, right? It, it's it was the first time during this whole run I looked at it and I kind of went, yeah, you know what they do, and and th- that doesn't mean they weren't trying hard. It doesn't mean they weren't trying giving all their effort. It was just a few times in that game where you look at them and you went, I kind of expected this to happen in the fourth game of the ACC championship. They they managed to hold it off for this many games, but I do think the emotional, the mental, the the fatigue of this run finally caught up with them, and they were going to have to be the annoying over energy pest if they were going to beat Purdue. Purdue had size, Purdue had, you know, a little bit of experience. They had some some guys that could really shoot. Didn't do it didn't didn't do everything that they hoped on offense. But for for State to pull off that game, they were gonna need to be, you know, wall to wall, wire to wire, all the energy in the world. And it just it looked like finally that they had played that many winner go home games in the last, you know, three weeks. Another thing that I kind of wrote down or jotted down as a mental note is that they kind of what we've been talking about started to hurt themselves Mm. a little bit they had the mental lapses for the first time 
in the NCAA tournament. I, mean, I think just a minute to the game, DJ Burns picking up his first foul as away he's from running, the ball, yeah. yeah, as he's or running away from the hoop, as he's running back on defense and transition, and then just some of the shot selections that they took. They had done such a good job at really moving the ball around the perimeter and holding out and getting an extra pass in to set up for a great shot. So many times when NC State was able to finally get a rebound or when Purdue did turn the ball over, I couldn't understand when you had Zach Eady all the way down on one end of the court, why you just didn't go to the – why you just didn't get, take it to the rim instead of pulling up for a three-point shot that ultimately led to a one-and-done possession on offense. It, it's here. Here's my thing. Um the difference between those being electric, energy-producing plays and being exactly what you said, like kind of the head-scratchers, is making it or missing it, right? Yeah. To me, the the for lack of a better term, the magic ran out, right? I, I, I talked with Clark Kellogg, who you've seen throughout the uh, the entire uh, tournament on, on uh, TV with, with Charles Barkley and Kenny and Ernie and those guys. And when we were talking about this game, we were doing this on, on my afternoon show, uh, the argument for State was the magic, right? Because I said, all right, these two Goliaths down low, who has the advantage? He was like, Zach Eady. I was like, all right, the perimeter players. who has the? He's like, Purdue. I was like, okay, wait a second. If if Purdue has the advantage in this and that and the other and all this and the uh, they're a one seed and they have the player of the year and all, well, the argument for NC State, is it just like they've been magical? And he was kind of like, yeah, like that's March Madness. The argument yeah. is they've been magical, which leads me to the very first moment I went, uh-oh, uh, right? It's it's the moment in, in the, the superhero movie where Kryptonite's around and it's like he goes to f- shoot his laser beams and they don't shoot. It was uh, early in the game. Casey Morsell, uh, the the beautiful do everything the right guy, do everything the right way guy that he is. Uh, there's a turnover, there's a fast break, and Morsell doesn't give up on the play. Right, true NC State fashion, true everything this run is about fashion. Flies back on defense, blocks the shot at the rim, and and it's like there it is. That's yeah. that's the thing, right? This team doesn't give up. Not. Seven seconds later, it works into a rotation three. Purdue knocks down a three. And all you learn is that great effort, that great energy, that great play, that stick to it attitude, that determination turned a two point bucket into a three point bucket for, for Purdue. And I went, oh no. Because those were the plays that not only would, like along this run, would State get the ball and it would probably be a bucket on the other end, but it, it ignited everything, right? There, there were. Two or three moments that felt like do or die moments, and I'm like, somebody's got to ignite NC State, and and DJ Horn would hit a hit a hit a basket or it would, would make a tough long two, and I'm like, all right, there it is, only to be matched by a Purdue three, and Purdue yeah. wasn't playing great offensively, and each time that happened, it, it felt the air get sucked out of this run just a little bit. It, it it no one can explain March Madness. I can't explain to you what happened. You know, halfway through that Louisville game at the beginning of the ACC tournament, that turned State into one of the best teams in the country. I don't even think if you really like truth serum the players, they'd be able to say like, "Well, this is what happened." For the same reason, I don't know what happened in in that Purdue game, but some of that magic was lost. Not an effort thing, not an energy thing, not a preparation thing. It was just that special sauce wasn't there. I, when you bring up Casey Morsell, I think of another play that was kind of a take the air out of the arena type moment in the game for state fans. And it's when Casey Morsell airballed mm. that three pointer. Again, another shot that should he have taken? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Wide open. He's a good three point shooter. Like, like the result can't dictate the decision. I want him taking that shot every time. And guess what? If if you play that game, you know, ten times, I think he makes that shot six or seven of them. Like a, a wide open three point shooter, he's been he hasn't been shooting like he did last year, but he's still a really good three point shooter. Like the fact that it was an air ball did take the air out of it. I hope you know if he's given that shot, wherever he's playing next year, G League, uh, overseas, pick up. I don't I, NBA. I have no idea what his pro prospects are going to look like. I hope every time that guy has that open shot in a clutch moment, he takes it because. I think he makes it more often than he doesn't. I think he airballs it probably one out of every 50, and it's just luck of the draw that came yeah. up in a big moment. The other part of that, and I, I, I agree with you with that statement, is that I think it goes back to what kind of Keith said in the postgame 
uh, press conference, the biggest difference in the game was that shots that they were usually hitting throughout the NCAA tournament, they just weren't hitting in that game. And and the other thing is th- Zach Eady. You know, I thought it was it was actually you know I joke about two grizzly bears fighting over a salmon on National Geographic. Uh, Edie and Burns was the first time like Burns was lowering his shoulder, and they weren't moving. Right, yeah. if, if they made contact, you know, eighteen feet from the bucket, boom, they're still eighteen feet from the bucket. Up until that moment, every time I've seen DJ Burns lower his shoulder, if they're if they're making contact eighteen feet from the bucket, by the time their feet start stop shuffling. They're 15 feet from the bucket. And then he does it again, and they're 12 feet from the bucket. Uh, And the same was true on the other end. I actually – one of the things that really impressed me about Edie was DJ Burns wasn't moving. And and you know what else? Shout out to DJ Burns. The first five minutes, best defense I've seen him play in a long time. He he knew going into that game there's only one person that can physically match up with with Edie in any form or fashion – and it was him. Yep. So so he was guarding Edie. And again, just boom, boom. And and stalemate. Now Edie, again, credit to him, found other ways to score and work the hook shots and all these other things. But uh but I think the bigger part of it was was the NC State for the first time in a long time, through Middlebrooks, Diara, and Burns, didn't have a huge advantage down low. I think the the three of them um combined to to score like twelve points. Yeah, uh, are you eight, talking two about two. Uh, Middlebrooks, uh, Diara, Marcel? Yep. Uh, combined for four points in the game, and DJ Burns finished with eight points. Yeah, so 12 points total. And and I don't necessarily think any of them played a horrendous offensive game. I don't think they were missing a bunch of shots they normally make. It's it's just you, sometimes you have to give credit to the other guy. Edie won the big man battle, and guess what? He's a national player of the year like he's gonna win the big man battle a lot uh burns was gonna have to be special he was gonna have to get a little lucky he was gonna have to have that magic and and it wasn't there i was impressed by ben middlebrooks when he was going on defense D- absolutely yeah, on defense when he was going e when dj burns had to take a breather uh zach Eady uh turned the ball over five times i know some listeners might be thinking graham that's not a lot it is when his combined total for his uh first four ncaa tournament games was four turnovers mm-hmm. one turnover a game and so Ben Middlebrooks just got in there and did the scrappiness yep. and just had the grittiness that was needed to kind of disrupt Zach Eady a little bit. But again, there's a reason why he's uh, was it Naismith? He just won the award yesterday. Uh, actually, I, I mean, I, I he won one last year. Uh, that's what I've been referring to. But I, uh, besides the point, there's a reason Zach Eady was able to find his rhythm, was able to get back into, it, and was pretty much just able to be dominant for Purdue like he usually is yes he did one by the way back to back so uh the the Naismith men's college basketball player of the year for the second straight year that that you're gonna have to play well and and actually you know I'm, I'm gonna take that back they did play well yeah. they held Purdue particularly on defense through the things we've talked about they did hold Purdue to significantly below most of their averages for both the season and the tournament. They did play well, but it just comes back to what we've been saying all along, which is the rhythm wasn't there, right? The the made shots wasn't there. You get the open shot, it felt like it should have been a step into jumper for a good three-point shooter, and it ends up being an air ball. DJ Horn, who, by the way, I think at times recognized, I have to be Superman, and maybe forced it a little bit. Did get his 20, but took 21 shots. That's unusual for a player of, of his caliber. Um, Michael O'Connell's injury, you, yeah. that alone, him going in and out of the lineup and give him credit for trying to be you know, the warrior and I'm, I'm going to play, that may have even messed with him a little bit more by going in and coming out and going in and coming, coming out. out. Uh, you know, and, and it made, whether it was Jaden Taylor, Morcel, Horn, it made them more on-ball, ball handlers. They had to control things more, and and that's a role that you know is added to your plate at the last possible second, and and it, it can mess with things. So, you know, there's there's I don't want to say you know I don't believe in moral victories. So if you lose a game, you lose a game. Sure. There's there's no shame in losing to an opponent when the shots weren't falling for you when. Yeah. Your offense did what it could. You dealt with some injuries. A couple guys didn't have hot shooting nights. It, you you hoped what well, they went nine straight and then lost the tenth. Yep. You hoped that they were gonna put together eleven straight magical games. 
But you knew it wasn't going to be a, like 100. This wasn't the new way NC State played. Uh, a hot streak is not like, well, I guess we're never going to play bad again. You just hoped to get through it before the 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 clock struck zero on your Cinderella run, the clock struck midnight. And and it turns out it happened one game too early. But but they played pretty darn well for most of, of a magical run. They played well enough to win every game up until that one. And, and you know, it's it's – as much as we can point to, like, this didn't happen, the big guys needed to score more, Marcel needed to knock down a couple shots, uh, DJ Horn needed to shoot a better percentage, Breon Pass maybe needed to get the ball more because he actually yeah. had some some juice. Like, as much as we want to point to all the, the little minute details and say this is how it could have been different, barring, like, all of those things being different, I'm not sure the end result is different. Breon Pass looked really good in the minutes that he got. I mean, the future brights for him. The future is bright for NC State's basketball program just in general. We could have a whole podcast on that. But what's also impressive is that, as you mentioned, they won nine straight, looked pretty darn good doing it, and they did it after just the wave of emotions mm. they had during the regular season. Started off hot, started off good in the ACC play, started off 5-0 and up until they played North Carolina at PNC Arena. Lost four straight, and again, I always say, at a point in the season where they could have just split off and just thrown in the towel, it might have brought them closer together. Pack Therapy, you mentioned the future. I want to talk about how this impacts the future, and we're going to do that right after this break here on the Pack Therapy Podcast. Back here on the Pack Therapy Podcast, Tim Donnelly, Graham Hill. The, the I almost don't want to do this too soon, but you have to. Uh the future. How does this run by NC State impact the future? Because, you know, I was I was in a, a Twitter argument, right? And that's you know, that's where all the real intellectual conversations have. Yeah. Uh, with it with a UNC fan, and and UNC fans were doing UNC fans things during the game, and and I don't blame them. It's a rivalry. Go nuts. Talk your trash. Hey, Roy Williams was even there cheering against State. <laughs> exactly. Talk talk your trash. Um, but the part that was frustrating to me was that they were uh, acting as if this run had no impact on anything. Like, oh, now it's back to normal. Oh, you got – See you again in 34 years, it's, yeah. It, like, uh, it, it's – now you will pat you on your head. And I was going, listen, it doesn't have to be something for the future, right? It could just be you experienced an awesome month and you're celebrating it. it no one no one is is saying that they're, they're going to be back in the Final Four next year. That's all waits to be seen. No one's saying they're going to be the favorite in the ACC next year. But there is an opportunity here to build off of it. Uh, Burns, Horn, Morsell, they've exhausted their eligibility. They're not coming back. Their impact on the program can still be felt for years to come if you take advantage of it in the right ways. Now, part of it is the guys that are coming back, and and, and we'll see who does and who doesn't. The transfer portal is active, and uh, I don't know if, if you know this, this is a – for my Seinfeld fans, this would be a mighty impressive way to Costanza, right? Thank you, everybody. Good night. Like, it's a, it's a great joke to end on. I don't think they want to. Uh, so the the Middlebrooks, the O'Connells, the the, the they all, Dennis Parker Jr., like everybody has a decision to make. But if they all come back, that's a mighty, mighty impressive amount of experience to bring back to the court. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is will Jaden Taylor and Michael O'Connell mm-hmm. return next season? I feel pretty high on Michael O'Connell just because – He's now part of NC State basketball history. <laughs> when you look back, you know, 37 years from now when NC State sent know, another so, uh, incredible run. Those are those UNC Courtney fans Carolina again fans. going, yeah, Caleb Love. I thought he was going to be around for a long time. Too. Fair. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, uh, actually, no, let's rub that in a little bit. Fair enough. But I, look, I, don't, I don't think O'Connor. I think I would be surprised if more than one or two that have eligibility remaining aren't back. Because yeah. – I mean, this this is a great sales pitch for what you can do in Raleigh, right? It's 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 so much fun. Why would you not want to come back and try to do it again? Well, that is a sales pitch for Kevin Keats in a time where the transfer portal is so primarily useful in college basketball. Dare I say, Kevin Keats might go ahead and had the greatest, or might have the advantage next season compared to other college college basketball coaches because you know that there's a lot of guys right now whose seasons ended way earlier than they wanted to. Some mm-hmm. maybe in the NCAA tournament thinking. Wow, he was able to do this with seven guys that he just threw together before the season. Why I want to be a part of that. Well, it's actually my my pitch to the guys that were on the floor, the the O'Connells, the Jaden Taylors, the the Middlebrooks, uh, to get them to come back would be listen, the reason why it took us so long to do this 
is because we brought in so many new faces and we didn't have the 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 core already set. And, and granted, you know, DJ Burns was around, Casey Morsell was around, they had a few guys. But if you bring back five, six guys that played in a Final Four for you, and, and you're going to have to hit the portal, and I guarantee you they're already in the portal, and I guarantee you, uh, you know, the pitch is right now, hey, we had all these transfers, we went to the Final Four, we want you to be next, and they're talking to big names. Uh, but if you bring in those guys, you're going to want them to to already have the structure in place, and I, and I think they have that this year. Um, heck, I would have DJ Burns on the call if you can, right? Get 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 DJ Horn to call somebody up and say, this is my experience playing one year at NC State, and this is why I think it would be great. I don't even know if that's legal, right? Do they <laughs> become boosters or alum that quickly? Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's something that not many programs can say. Every other program is saying, you know, if you come here, we're going to try to make it to a Final Four. NC State can say, if you come here, we know how to make it to a Final Four because we just did. Uh, it's it's reinforcing. Michael O'Connell said, right, this is why I came to NC State. Uh, they, they were talking about national championships during recruiting. Now when you do that, it comes with even more credibility because it's something that you've done. One of the big, pace, one of the big things also will be – how do you replace DJ Burns and and DJ Horn I mean, and DJ and, Horn and Casey Morsell? Uh, you don't replace DJ reasons. Burns. Yeah, yeah, you don't replace DJ Burns just as far as the size and everything. But you go need- recruit the, an offensive tackle from the football team and try to try to say like, hey, you played you played in high school, right? True. It, it, that's just not how it works. Call it Tony right. Gibson. Be like, hey, Tony, yeah. what what defensive guys can yeah. you spare for us? But I mean, you have Brandon Huntley Hatfield coming in from mm-hmm. Louisville. That yep. that certainly helps. And then one thing that a lot of state fans probably need to remember, and you just probably haven't thought about it, would just being caught up in the midst of this run. Paul McNeil, Trey Parker. Yep. They're going to headline NC State's 2024 recruiting class. Fayetteville native Parker and Rockingham native Paul McNeil, a pair of four-star recruits, according to 247 Sports, will make up the Wolfpats recruiting class. Uh, McNeil, six foot, six foot six wing. Uh, scored a 900 points in one game this yeah, year. Yeah. yeah, scored like the most three-point shots all high school season. I think he was in like season. the 70s. Like he, he legitimately is it was, a, a, yeah, he scored, a he had a, thrower. Yeah, he had yeah. a 70-point game. And then Parker, more known for incredible athleticism, a trait that meshes well in Kevin Keats' system as far as getting up and down the court in transition, three-point shooting as and, well. And they're not done. Uh, I don't know if everyone wants to hear this, but uh, Copeland from Syracuse, who was trash-talking NC State the entire game in the ACC, has said he's, he's in the transfer portal, and he said he's heard from NC State. There are going to be players that hear from NC State up and down because you have to recognize the moment, right? You have to recognize you're one of the hot teams right now. What, like I'm, I'm big on the one shining moment, moment, the 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 song and the video that plays after the national championship it's tonight, folks. It'll be tonight, and I'll be staying up for it. Um, like State's going to be all over that thing, right? They're going to have the the win over Texas Tech they're going to have the overtime game against Oakland they're going to have beating Duke they're going to like the shot D- of the boombox DJ Burns is going to be all over that thing and and you you have to take advantage of it you have to right because if not then it is just what uh, that that UNC fan was telling me on Twitter right it's just like oh you had a hot month way to go but if it becomes a hot month that turns into recruiting two top level transfers that fit your system that become fitting them in with O'Connell and and Taylor who you convinced to come back based on the fun of this and that turns into uh McNeil your your stud scoring incoming true freshman uh being in a culture as a true freshman that allows him to blossom because you're in a winning culture that becomes him as a junior leading the ACC in scoring that becomes the next five star wanting to be the next Paul McNeil which becomes which becomes and then suddenly it's 40 years from now now, uh, Kevin Keats is is you know finally retiring and going into the rafters. There's a st- there's a statue being built of him beside the, outside like, yeah, Reynolds. There's there's more trophies and there's more banners, but that's the challenge now, right? And and by the way, it happened the moment it struck triple zeros against Purdue. Actually, I'll I'll give you like an hour after that to hug your seniors, to get in the huddle in the locker room, to talk about how special it was. But the moment that, that you turn the page, it becomes about the future. And, and you know, it's wildly cliche, and it's funny now because Stefan Diggs didn't end up working in, in Buffalo. But there's a, a picture of Stefan Diggs, I think like five years ago in Buffalo. Uh, the Chiefs had beaten them. I think it was the AFC Championship game. Yep. And, and Stefan Diggs is watching the other team celebrate. And you re- realize that was a player 
who just lost, right, and and had the world at their fingertips, dreams of, of rings and banners, and had just lost and was already making themselves stand, torturing themselves to watch that celebration thinking about the future. Now, again, it's hilarious because it obviously did not work out for Stefan Diggs in Buffalo, but they had a lot of success since then. And, and, and like, it is kind of that natural turning of the page where you have to build off of what it is or else it is just that one cool story, right? It's if you don't turn it into something bigger, if you don't turn it into something better, it's just, hey, remember. And by the way, if this is all it is, it's really fun, right? If it's just, hey, remember in 2024, that awesome run we went on. And, and you know, I, as as a, a podcast we had here on Pack Therapy with Graham and his dad, Tim, uh, showed. Like, if it was just a cool moment for uh, parents and children, and it was just a cool moment for DJ Burns to make six figures in NIL deals in two weeks. If it was just a cool moment, that's great. But as a program, the challenge is to make it not just a cool moment, make it that piece that changed everything that turned you into a bit bigger and better program. I'm glad you brought up NIL and DJ Burns and just the massive money he got just in the two-week span of the tournament. That's another part of this. Take a page out of football's book. Even though you can't really promote a win out of it, a Final Four is just as good, a Final Four appearance. This is the time for Kevin Keats to release a video on, uh, you know, one pack, one goal, NIL collective, and say, like, hey, now's the time, like, to donate to NC State basketball so we can lock up some of these players while also having a a recruiting tool, because that's what it's all about nowadays, to get these guys out of the portal to come and play here next year so that this can continue to go on for years and years, these consistent NCAA tournament runs. This was really fun. How much would you pay to do it again? It, there you go. Right? And and 25 bucks? Like, are, are you willing to, to not go out to eat and make, make food at home one night to save 20 bucks and donate it? Or are you somebody that, you know, and I, and, and I know a few of them, that, you know, this opportunity, they were in Phoenix, right? And and they uh, took the family, and they wanted their kids to have that memory, and they wanted the NC State to be a special thing. Are you willing to give 100? Are you willing to give 1,000? Are you are you rich and loaded and willing to give 10 Gs? Like, like that all needs to be a part of, of how you build it future, uh, into the future, um, you know? And, and guess who else should be calling? Dave Doran should be calling. Guess who else should be calling? Uh, like, every every – because, hey, basketball was fun, right? How fun would it be if we made the final four on the football field? Like it's it's truly a rising tide raises all boats and 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 money, uh, you know, raising money is pretty darn important. Yeah, it does just sort of feel like okay, we have no idea what will happen. The season just ended, but it does sort of. But feel it is like- that quick. Uh, uh, Dan Hurley, the coach of UConn. He said part of the reason he's so excited his team keeps winning is because he doesn't have to dive into the portal. He's like, I know as soon as this run is over, I have to be knee-deep in the portal, so it's kind of nice that my team is still playing, so I have a reason to be like, ah, yeah, can't do it. Got you know, got to get ready for the national championship tonight. Uh, like It has to start now, and, and, and there's really no other, other way to put it other than it has to start now, and you're never going to be hotter than you are right now, right? True. Like, right now, you are the 11 seed that ran to the Final Four. A couple of weeks from now, you're the 11 seed that ran to the Final Four last month. And then a couple of months from now, you're going to be, oh, yeah, that team from last year that had the hot streak. Like, you, you're you never going to be as white hot as you are right now. It just feels like the tides are turning for NC State basketball programs, something that Wolfpack fans have been wanting for a very, very long time. And the transfer portal will be a big – Will be a big will be a big part of that. Kevin Keats has proven the past two seasons from guys like Jarko Joyner, now DJ Horn, DJ Burns. Case were so previously to that that he does get it right when it comes to grabbing these guys out of the portal. And you can even make an argument that Keats kind of you know now after this year succeeds in putting teams together via the portal. Well, yeah, the last two years, um, I I think. Part of the reason why this year was a down year during the regular season is because they 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 brought ass- guys in out of the portal, their, assembled their team that way. If you told me, you know, it, it's uh, there are certain teams like this in the NBA, and I won't go full NBA where it's like they're an older team, they're hurt a bunch, and they're like a six seed, but you feel like as long as they're 100 percent healthy, ten minutes before the the playoffs begin, they're a contender to win it all. I kind of look at NC State with with Keats that way now, like. You can get all the transfers as long as you mesh, as long as you gel. Ten minutes before the ACC championship, you've proven you're you're a threat to go win it all. So, uh, you know that's that's as big of a compliment as I can give them. Is if you if you get it right, 
10 minutes before the ACC championship, you might be in the final four because you just did it. The good news is, for those non-conference games at PNC Arena, expect more of a crowd. Yeah. Definitely. And, and, and by the way, it's not a carte blanche. To, like, you got to earn it every time, right? I can guarantee you the the night they raise the banner, I can guarantee you the the first game, right? Those, like, they're going to be massive crowds, but you're going to put a product together that makes people want to stick around. It's It's – Sports are crazy that way. It's what have you done for me lately, uh, which is why you lock up contract extensions and everything like like uh, Kevin Keats did when things are going well because – and he might get a new contract this offseason. Who knows? Uh, when things are going well because he, who knows how long they're going to be going well. That's, that's kind of your challenge. That's kind of one thing that we haven't mentioned is that it's the refresh of Kevin Keats's career at mm. NC State. You love the analogies. It's like when you go through a bad breakup and you realize, you know what? I missed them. I didn't realize how good I had it with them until you don't you know, know what until, you got till yeah. it's gone. Until I went and saw them, you know, until I saw them just get over the breakup mm. quickly. It kind of feels I I was at the Hurricanes game yesterday. I'll bring this point up and I'll finish with this. Is that I was at the Hurricanes game and I saw somebody wearing a shirt that says, Kevin Keats, I owe you an apology. And then on the back of the shirt it said, I'm sorry. Yeah. There you go. That's all of NC State's fan base right now. It's it's I, that's actually very self aware because I feel like more of the fan base is I knew it all along. I don't know why everyone else was talking about his job. I was, I loved that guy. And it's like, mm, there weren't many loud voices saying you love that guy. Uh, but it's, it's, yeah, fans get to change their mind just like everybody else. Kevin Keats changed a lot of minds this, this run. And uh, he'll definitely be back next year and into the future. Uh, and, and we're going to be along for the ride here at the Pack Therapy Podcast. Please subscribe. We're going to have some off-season pods. We're going to have some football pods. They had their spring break over the, or spring uh, game over the weekend as well. A little overshadowed, but still they had it. Uh, so please subscribe to the Pack Therapy Podcast. Everywhere podcasts can be found. Check it out on YouTube. Thank you to Graham. Great basketball season. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to follow along basketball, big recruits, and things like that. Uh, until next time, have a great time, everybody, from here at the Pack Therapy Pod.